once we commit to something that's very scary and very with lots of fear um, that intention really feeds on itself and it's good morning it's 6 a.m. I'm headed out to Kelly Wyoming for a nice early morning video shoot we're gonna catch the sunrise sunrise in the Tetons How are your eyelashes doing? Totally frozen. <laughs> <laughs> it's about 10 degrees. Minus 10 degrees that is. Got a little sunrise on the Grand. Starting to warm up. Welcome to Jackson. Oh my God, so beautiful. Yeah. Katarina's here. Eventually, originally from Brazil, but lives in San Francisco now. So first time in Jackson Hole. No, we have lots of snow when all the sagebrush gets covered by the snow. This is filled with sagebrush and a lot of snow this year. Anyways, just finished up with a nice little walk along the Grovant River. So we got back from our snowshoe and the truck said minus 16 degrees. So it got pretty chilly out there. Now we're hanging by the Grovant River. It's such a spectacular morning. Check it out. Kelly, Wyoming. Check out these trees. I'm just gonna get a couple of shots of the river. Okay. Wait, we can go back? Uh, I'm just gonna get a couple of shots. Okay. Just the water real quick. So you guys can just stand here and I'll be right back. Okay. Filming by the river. It was beautiful. Such a gorgeous day. Knew it would be and uh, it's not disappointing. So. We're headed back into town. We're gonna to do some breakfast, a little cup of joe, and explore downtown Jackson. And then this afternoon, we are headed to Slide Lake for another snowshoe, snowshoeing on Jack or on Slide Lake. So that'll be that'll be nice to catch the afternoon rays. It'll be a little warmer this morning. Snowshoe minus 16, um, but just so so gorgeous. Um, I love it like this. So. And then we got some snow camping tonight. Um, so we got some spectacular view set for a campsite and it's gonna be chilly. Awesome, all right. Headed into Jackson and uh, gonna have an awesome breakfast. I think we want to get a portrait yeah. today. Yeah. That would be a better like push in with like the 24 I feel like. for a portrait of this guy. Oh, I guess the, yeah. Oh, no, I kind of thought that too. But you just awesome breakfast at Cultivate. This is the oldest building in Jackson Hole. The famous, famous arches of Jackson Hole. I'm in the town square. Got the nice ice skating rink over here. The human Zamboni. And got the famous cowboy bar across the street. And so I'm guiding Katarina through these three days here in Jackson Hole and it's been fun to get getting to know her. She's uh she's actually a professional travel influencer and you can follow her on Instagram professional traveler is her uh, handle on Instagram but she travels around the world, world as an influencer and it's we're talking at breakfast today about how what's that tipping point from quitting your job and following your passion and doing a job that you have passion for and I asked her you know what again what was that tipping point what 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 allowed her to be able to quit her job. She, she worked for Google, so she had a very good job and she, she's now a, a professional influencer. And her story is kind of real similar to mine. Her answer was that you really need the passion 
in love for what you want to do, which will allow you to deal with the unknown of starting your own business, of all that 24 hour constant thinking in your head of hustling to create create money. Where's the, where's the money gonna come from now? 100% is up to you. And so having the passion for what you do will really, really help you get over the hurdles of that unknown that's just inevitable with anything that I think is is worthwhile doing is that it's always there at the unknown and it's scary but again going back to having a passion loving what you do will get you through the day-to-day -day of all those things that are fear-based that might stop us from following our passion so it's been great to getting to know her she's originally from Brazil she now lives in the Bay Area but again travels around the world so um, I'm waiting for them they're at the hotel getting some luggage and we're gonna do some shooting here in Town Square. Okay, wait, can you do it like this? So It's been so fun talking with Katarina about her, how she kind of started her own business and followed her passion and just I, I think it, it kind of makes me go back to when I quit my job and became a coach and talking with her she she mentioned that once she made the commitment to quit her job as scary as it was and as much as it was going to be an unknown of how it was going to go as soon as she quit her job things just started falling into her lap. She almost got too busy. And I think there's an energy there that once we commit, once we commit to something that's very scary and very with lots of fear, um, that intention really feeds on itself. And the same thing happened to me. I quit my job and things just started falling into place. Like things that shouldn't have never happened, happened. And I think that only, that type of energy that type of situation only only happens once you've committed. And uh, that's kind of, it's just been a good reminder today talking with her and it's just fun to fun to be with her and, and learn about her, her business. So, um, boy, it's nice. The sun is shining, vitamin D day. You can see Snow, Snow King the town downhill in the background there. Snow's looking pretty good. So uh, a question I get quite frequently when I do speaking tours is how to, how to start a coaching business. And ironically, I just got a message on YouTube from Raising the Reaps about how to start a coaching business or tips on starting a coaching business. So um, in, in talking with Katerina today and hearing about how she started her business, it's kind of interesting to see, even though we have different businesses, how common that process is of starting a business, whether you're quitting a job to start your business or starting that passion and doing it as a hobby while you have another business or have another job. And I, I think the key mindset, that, that tipping point of making that leap, of just making the commitment of living that life when i 20 years ago when i first started coaching and i quit, quit my job but i i i made a a very very conscious choice that i became a coach regardless of how many athletes i coached i was a coach i was living the life i wanted to live and being that coach and that was a really really key moment for me and everything started to happen after that once i made that decision i quit my job and there's a lot of fear there there's always going to be the fear and you have to battle the unknown of not knowing what's going to happen when you make that leap but making the decision to become the person you want to be and living that it didn't matter if i had one athlete or 20 athletes i was still a coach and it didn't matter you know and as soon as I made that decision, things just 
started falling into place. I quit my job, another door opened. And all these things that you would never even imagine happening started to happen, but it was through that commitment of being that person you wanna be, being that coach you wanna be, or in Katarina's case, being that professional traveler that she is. She says the same thing. You know, once she made that commitment to following her passion and quitting her job, she couldn't have, she had too much work. And it, I don't think that happens until you make that commitment. So raising the reaps, one of my tips, and this video now is gonna become on tips on how to become a coach, is that just make that choice, okay? Where you're gonna go wrong is if you say, I need 20 athletes before I become a coach, or I need 20 athletes to make a living at this, okay? Just decide that you're a coach and find one athlete, because now it doesn't really matter if you're coaching one person or 20 or anywhere in between, you're still a coach and just become that coach. Slide Lake, everybody. Out for a little snowshoe. And it's crazy, it's 20 degrees, almost 40 degrees warmer than this morning. And we've got a great snowshoe right across the lake. All right, I'm sneaking in a little bit of a run after our snowshoe. Gonna scope out our camping site. Wait till you see this spot. It's amazing. Here we go. Look at this. Unreal. The Tetons. This is our camping spot for tonight. <laughs> Kent set up practice. <laughs> Inside? Yeah, so just have your feet at the end. But on top um, of it or inside it? Inside it, I think. Right? No, it's on top of it. Mm. On top? Because then you won't see my Because then you won't see, yeah. You, you, they, oh. put, they put it kind of like this. Oh, that, that, that's weird. cool. I like that. How do I change the focus? Um, you can use the touch screen. The touch screen does it. Do you think your feet should be on top if you had them? Or can you see everything okay? I think so. 